Hello and welcome to another thrilling episode of The News You Missed, the video game news show that recaps all the major happenings in the video game news that you might have missed and might be important to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a number of Pokemon stories. We've got a lot of NFT stories that we're going to discuss and several third party along with PSVR news. If that all sounds good to you, I hope you guys had a great New Year, a great Christmas, and let's hit it with the first News You Missed of 2020. Well, as always, I like to start off my videos by thanking my patrons. I know you're far and few between, but those out there who really support and contribute for uh, absolutely nothing in return, just a free new show, I really appreciate you. Let's begin by explaining that Converse X Pokemon have introduced some new shoe lines, uh, most of which have sold out already, so if you were wanting to get them, you need to put it on the back burner and hopefully you'll be able to pick it up. But it actually turns out that most of their stuff has already sold out so man if you're trying to get some new pokemon kicks you'd be better suited looking elsewhere there are still a few that you can pick up but the most popular newly introduced one is sold out and the white version of it is also gone too but they do look cool so that's something to look forward to ladies and gentlemen the origin of pokemon and gym badges actually come from belts belts in many martial arts consist of several tiers from white to black and everything in between and apparently Apparently, the developers stated that they, they wanted the trainers who go through the game to actually earn belts so that it wouldn't necessarily be just like someone uh, getting stronger, but instead having ranks on their skill and mastery of Pokemon. And I think that's really, really cool. And I'm sure they introduced some Easter eggs like Black Belt Knob with uh, the, the Black Belt and stuff like that. So anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. And now you know. Pokemon Legends Arceus gets a new six minute overview trailer. This trailer mostly consisted of a lot of mechanics being shown off. Uh, the biggest one, the most important one is that Pokemon can attack you. We already knew this, but we actually saw their attacks and they can really mess the player up a lot. I'm pretty excited for it. A lot of people are excited for it. This is something that we wanted, a world where you can just interact with Pokemon in the open and you can capture them. So I'm super hyped for this game and hopefully it'll come out and be fantastic. Continuing on, Logan Paul may have spent 3.5 million on fake Pokemon cards, according to Poke Beach. So yeah, there's a uh, there's this fan site called Poke Beach, and they really dig in Logan Paul, man. They hate him so much, and rightfully so because he uh, he he boosted the idea to scout Pokemon cards just to to get on eBay and shill every friggin' card that you have. Oh, you know, I have a Bulbasaur from my childhood. It's first edition. I mean, you know, it's been used and it's got fingerprints on it, but it's probably worth a hundred dollars probably actually you know what some guy told me it was worth ten thousand dollars why not so stuff like that happens and keep popping up and even if it doesn't stay like that for a long time even though the price does eventually reset down a little bit uh the prices do stay a little bit higher than what they actually should be because of people like logan paul buying all these pokemon cards and showing them off online regardless some people are saying that he did it intentionally knowing that the cards were fake and he just did it as a publicity stunt and yeah i mean it seems like something that a big big influencer a star would do and could do but i guess only time will tell if they are 100 fake or real uh, maybe he'll never even tell so the new pokemon snap took many years of trial and error to create the core concept could have been changed quite a lot basically what they went on record to say is that throughout the years every iteration of the nintendo console the developer Developers were looking at making a Pokemon Snap sequel, but they couldn't work in something that they wanted. They couldn't actually generate a concept for the new Pokemon Snap game on the GameCube or the Wii or the Wii U. Uh, they eventually had a lot of ideas that got scrapped, and they were going to go with something new, but then they decided to settle on the original idea of being stuck in a car on an on-rails type of shooter, and that's what we ended up getting. But you can read the full article 
article and all of their quotes, but that's the gist of it. Shigeru Miyamoto thanks players for rating Breath of the Wild as Japan's best game of all time. That's quite a statement of all time, huh? Well, they do have a top 100 list, and you can see it over on Kotaku, but I'll go ahead and run down the top 10. At number 10, we have Super Mario Bros. 3. At number 9, Final Fantasy X. At number 8, Chrono Trigger. At number 7, Smash Bros. Ultimate. At number 6, Dragon Quest 3. At number 5, Splatoon 2. At number 4, Animal Crossing New Horizons. At number 3, Final Fantasy 7. At number 2, Dragon Quest 5. And at number 1, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Mario Kart 9 is in active development, quote-unquote, and comes with a new twist, quote-unquote. This is an analysis claiming this, and there is no backing for this information whatsoever. It's just an analysis. Uh, there's no articles that say he was called over to Nintendo to play the game himself. He is just predicting this. So I don't... I, I, I could predict it. Here, check this out, guys. In the near future, Nintendo is going to release Mario Kart 9, and it will have a new gimmick with it. Well, yeah, man, really? You, you don't say. Like, every single time Nintendo releases a Mario Kart, there's something new that they add to it. A new twist. Wow. Shocker. I guess I could be a video game analysis, right? So, anyways, it's no shock that it's in development, and it's no shock that Nintendo are developing a new console, and it's no shock that they're developing a new Mario and a new Zelda. Probably a new Metroid. Yo, come on, man. Really? Wow. Active development. Tell me something we don't know. Some unique decorations were placed in front of the PlayStation Store in China. If you follow the thread and actually look at what people say, a lot of people say that over in China, they just sell everything. They don't care. The store might be decked out in PlayStation, but they'll sell you a Wii U. They'll sell you a Nintendo Switch. They, they don't care. They just sell whatever. So I think this is pretty funny, though, that um, Mario from Mario Odyssey and Bowser from Mario Odyssey are like pointing to the PlayStation 5. It's fantastic. I like it. It's, it'll give you a chuckle. So the uh, PSVR 2 has been announced. It has 4K HDR OLED with 110 degree FOV. That's the field of view. Frame rate is 90, 120 hertz, which is really good. You want it nice and smooth so you don't get sick. The headset sensory has feedback and 3D audio. That's very, very important. It has eye tracking, which is even more important. And the Sense controllers can include haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, which again, uh, it's, it's really important for those things to be in play to make you feel like you're in the VR space. But it does come with a single cord, which means it's not wireless, which will probably take you out of the VR space. But regardless, the cord will make the uh, response time uh, almost nothing. So that's much better than having even a slight delay on VR games. Sony confirms it is working on a new Twisted Metal series. Also, I love Twisted Metal. My favorite Twisted Metal game is Twisted Metal Black. I'm super excited for Twisted Metal to be coming back. Rainbow Six Extraction will be launching day one on Xbox One Game Pass. Also, Hatsumiku Logic Paint S is coming to Xbox, a Hatsumiku game on Xbox. This is more of a puzzle game than a traditional rhythm-based Hatsumiku game, but, you know, I follow that stuff for my kid. She's really into it. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other kids that are too. So, over on Game Pass, there's a new announcement showing the games that are coming. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition would be one of the biggest hitters that's out there right now. That's really, really cool. But for me, really, Spelunky 2 and Mass Effect are, are the biggest ones from this list. You guys can check them all out. I haven't played them all, and I gotta tell you, I don't know a lot about all of them. But if you do, feel free to discuss it. The maker of those classic arcade cabinets, Arcade 1-Up, is releasing a Killer Instinct Pro Series arcade cabinet. This thing looks sick. I absolutely would love to have this thing. But, uh, yeah, it's it's probably going to be around three to four hundred dollars and it just plays Killer Instinct. So unless you're really into Killer Instinct, uh, I don't know. I could go either way. Still super cool to see these things being re-released into the public eye where people can actually afford them and put them in their homes. Sony has announced a new pair of OLED 4K TVs designed for gaming on the PS5. That's what this article says, but it's actually designed for any game console that takes advantage of a lot of these specifications. The TVs are specifically designed with V2 
VRR capability in mind, so if you're not getting like PSVR 2, then there's no point to buy the TV. Regardless, these wall-mounted TVs are absolutely gorgeous and look fantastic, but they really don't offer anything outside of what many other TVs can provide right now, with exception to the VRR support. And of course, there will be other TVs that will also offer that, but Sony, being the creator of the PlayStation, probably has an edge on them. The team behind Bravely Default and Triangle Strategy are going to announce multiple games this year, which is great, fantastic. Hopefully they make more of the RPGs in the style of uh, Bravely Default. I really like that game, and I think a lot of people agree that classic RPGs do have a place in the modern world. Sega could reverse its decision to sell NFTs following fan backlash, but this is not true also. There's conflicting reports that it's because of a meeting that occurred, and they've had had some feedback in the meeting that caused them to reconsider their decision but the thing is the meeting actually happened earlier this week so we're not particularly sure of the sources here and that means that Sega could still get into selling NFTs and Konami already has they have introduced uh, the Castlevania 35th anniversary NFTs and they 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 are nothing special honestly they're called the Konami Memorial NFT and I'm sure Metal Gear is going to be coming down the line but some of the NFTs are just your basic art the art that you you can see in the games like it's the title screens for several of the games it's some of the box art it's you know a map of the original Castlevania NES and on top of that Square Enix president has endorsed fully NFTs and has stated you hate NFTs because you play games to have fun the article itself and the quotes basically consist of him saying that people like to play games for fun and that's originally why they play but with the inclusion of NFTs people will be more inclined to play for the reason to progress gaming they are contributing to gaming in some way shape or form so it'll change people's reasons for playing video games from just playing to have fun to play to contribute which seems quite insane because when he goes on he talks about how traditional gaming has offered no experience an incentive for the latter group of people who were motivated strictly by inconsistent personal feelings as goodwill and volunteer spirit which is not not true most people just play video games as a fun time waster if they didn't have time to waste they likely wouldn't play video games video games are an escape it is escapism into another world it allows people to do things that they normally wouldn't do I play destiny 2 because I can go to space and kill a magical space dragon with a giant space bomb that can Came out of my hand not something i can do in real life yet but we'll see in the future right point is that's why people play games it's perfectly fine i appreciate that reason simple simple motivation so this president thinks that people will be playing games of the future to unlock these nfts to contribute and push gaming but there's no reason to contribute and push gaming you put a product out and we are consumers we will consume the product we're not investing in pictures we're not investing in dlc content in video games that we will never touch we will never see that is why nfts are so insane and to cement my point i want to discuss an nft that got taken down this is a nasty double whammy i talked about how i can't stop nfts i can't i can't stop dlc i can't stop microtransactions i can't stop gambling loot boxes i can't stop season passes paid online and i can't stop games as a service i have tried over many many years to stop these terrible things from influencing gaming but i can't do it alone but you got together we can stop this was an nft that was taken down this horrible nft was taken down because it not only infringes on the joy con trademark as this person took the joy cons made them their own in art and tried to profit from them but they also put them on etika's head and this is etika etika the youtuber that unfortunately took his own life a few years ago and yeah this is disgusting this is horrifying. This is something somebody thought was okay. I'm going to use a dead YouTuber to profit. That is what they said. I cannot begin to express how insane this is. NFTs are disgusting. They are used as a money laundering platform. Which brings me to 40 people being arrested for alleged Twitch money laundering schemes. So basically the way it works is that people would steal credit cards or steal some someone's accounts that 
that had money on them, they would go to streamers, buy a thousand bits, 10,000 bits, wh whatever amount of money, and then they would uh, get the streamer to get the money and they would make seven to eight dollars on the ten dollars off. And that is basically how it worked. And people have tallied it up to be around 9.8 million in money being laundered through Twitch. So yeah, money laundering definitely happens and NFTs and Twitch are not immune to it. Now with all that bad news, I wanted to end on some cool stories and I think you guys really like this. Shaquille O'Neal has given out a thousand Nintendo Switches to kids in need. Now he said, my family didn't have a lot, but they taught me the value of giving back to those in need. 15 to 20 million kids wake up on Christmas day and do not receive one gift. I felt that one time. I don't ever want a kid to feel like that. And so that's really, really nice. Shaquille O'Neal giving back to people. A lot of people do this, but I do find it nice that he's giving away Nintendo Switches. I believe I read an article that also said he gave away, you know, a thousand PS5s. So that's good. That's really nice to see people giving back in the community. And then finally, I want to close out on this. My favorite glitch of all time is missing no, but a close second would be the Zelda select glitch. And this is where this video comes from. You can use the select glitch to teleport across the map. The way Zelda Link's Awakening works is that there are two maps, the dungeon map and then the overworld map. And on both maps, everything is pretty much connected. So you could teleport all over the place. You could be in one dungeon and you could end up in dungeon seven on top of a tower fighting a boss within seconds by using the select glitch to edge to the map, press the and teleport across the screen. It is a fantastic glitch, and there are several other glitches being used in this video. This is a tool assisted run, and if you guys are interested in tool assisted runs, you can check them out. They are fun to watch, they are fantastic, they are awesome. So if you're wondering what you just watched, that's what you just watched. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for the first news you missed of 2022. I hope you guys had a great new year, had a great Christmas, and let's hope we have another great year. Let's hope 2022 will dwarf 2021 and only good things. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you click that sub button. If you guys like the video, go ahead and like and share to people. And I will see you guys next time. As always, good gaming, God bless, and thanks for watching.